All right, so this is kind of crazy. Samsung might actually pull off something no one expected. Their upcoming Exynos 2600 chip could be the first smartphone processor built on a 2 nanometer process. Yeah, 2 nanometers. Nah, that's next level stuff. And if things go as rumored, we might see it powering the Galaxy S26 lineup next year. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Usually, Samsung splits things up. Exynos for some regions, Snapdragon for others. But this time, reports say even the Galaxy S26 Ultra could rock the Exynos 2600 in Europe and South Korea. That's a big deal because historically hearing Exynos and Ultra in the same sentence used to make people nervous. But Samsung seems to have been working hard behind the scenes. This new chip's built using their two nanometer process with gate all around transistors, fancy name, but basically it means better power efficiency, less heat, and a solid boost in performance. And the specs sound wild. A 10-core CPU including one prime core hitting 4.2 GHz, three performance cores at 3.56 GHz, and six efficiency cores at 2.76 GHz. On paper, that's already impressive. But when alleged Geekbench results surfaced, things got spicy. We're talking a single-core score of 4,217 and multi-core of 13,482. To put that in perspective, that's M5 chip territory. Yeah, Apple M5 level performance on a smartphone chipset. That's something Samsung fans have been waiting years to hear. Now, small disclaimer, these scores aren't showing up on Geekbench's official database right now, so they could have been removed, faked, or maybe the test never happened. But if they're real, this is the first time an Exynos chip could match, or even beat, Apple and Qualcomm at their own game. Speaking of Qualcomm, the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 scored around 2,865 single-core and 9,487 multi-core. So if these numbers hold up, Samsung's new chip just wiped the floor with Qualcomm's best. That's massive, not just for phones, but for Samsung Foundry itself. See, TSMC still dominates chip manufacturing with over 70% of the global market, while Samsung sits around 7%. But if this 2 nanometer process delivers, it could change the entire game for Samsung's phones and their foundry business. And here's another angle, money. Last year, when Samsung couldn't produce enough Exynos 2,500 chips for the Galaxy S25 lineup, they had to pay Qualcomm an extra $400 million to cover Snapdragon replacements. Painful. But if yields really have improved this time, Samsung could save big by powering most S26 models with their own silicon. It's honestly kind of wild to think how far Exynos has come. A few years ago, Samsung's Mongoose cores were a bit of a disaster. Hot, inefficient, and underpowered compared to Snapdragon. Things got so bad they even shut down the custom core team. But now, they're being mentioned in the same breath as Apple's M series. That's one hell of a comeback. So yeah, whether you're Team Snapdragon, Team Apple, or Team Just Give Me a Good Phone, this might be the most exciting year for smartphone chips in a long time. What do you think? Can Samsung finally make Exynos cool again? Drop your thoughts below, and let's see if this chip really lives up to the hype. I'm going to keep an eye on this one, so make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss what happens next. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.